Good evening, everyone. My name is Rudy Page, and welcome to the Home Bound Creativity Show with the Wayne Hall Show and the Reggae Voyage Show. This is going to be a great evening. We've got um, personalities from UK, USA, Jamaica, all over. So we're really looking forward to this evening. So we're going to get straight into the show. And I'd just like to say hello to our guests, give everybody a chance just to say a quick hello, starting at the top of the screen with Donovan. Thank you very much and welcome again. And thanks for having me, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Donovan Longmore media personality here in the state of Connecticut and also the Connecticut Northeast Diaspora representative and co-chair. Um, just love the music of um, Jamaica and the uh, music period. And um, just want to make sure that uh, we get the right and proper, you know, music facts out there to people. And that's what we do mostly. We promote artists of great um, stature and build the reggae music industry as more as it is. As Jamaica is approaching 60, we want to make sure that we ignite not only Jamaica, but the world about what reggae music is all about. So again, thank you guys for being here. And um, I have two guests on here. I know Nadine has to go, so I'm going to introduce her first. Nadine Sullivan, we all know she's a songbird, um, Tasty's uh, talent competition champion in 78, and she have done over 40 years in the industry, one of the stalwarts in reggae music right now. And of course, she's the one of the few artists, female, that's really keeping the music on a positive scale. So we do appreciate her and I'd like to welcome you. Nadine, greetings. Greetings. Hold on. Thank you. I'm trying to get, oh God, I think no. I got the video. Oh, there we go. There you are. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Hi, Donovan. Thank you for Hi. that introduction. Just one correction. TC was 1979. Okay. I'm off a year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just one year off. You know, I kind of yeah. always boosting because I'm the first winner. So I'm always just like, yeah. always. Mm -hmm. Correct, and that's his concern. Thanks for your yeah, wonderful you. introduction. Yeah, thank yeah you. man. And your other guest, Donovan? Oh, next I have um, my correspondent from Jamaica. He's on the show with me. Uh, he's also a historian, a photographer, and a man who has done so much in Jamaica in terms of helping people to know what's going on with the history, not only of the music, but the people and the culture. His name is none other than Professor Alexander Ferrari. Mr. Ferrari? Hey, how you doing? How is everybody doing? Great. You're doing good, Great. Nick. Great, thanks. Thanks for that. Auction Donovan. <laughs> he can I'm historian, so now people expect a lot from me, but I'm ready to deliver. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And over to Wayne Hall. Hi, hello everyone. Uh, Wayne Hall, host of the Wayne Hall Show, Atlanta. Um, what can I say? Reggae uh, has been the the music I grew up on. It's the music I saw my people communicate via. I saw us uh, um, to, uh, address the world in what was going on in by way of social co commentary, it, uh, entertainment, politics, whatever it was. Reggae music has always been at the heart of it. And so I'm here today just to say how much I appreciate being one of those born in reggae, grew up in reggae and living reggae. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. Dean Roden. Hi. Yes, thank you very much, Sir Rudy Page. Honorable Sir Rudy Page for, it, for having me on this show. I said, I must say, born in reggae, I eat reggae, I sleep reggae. You know, I've been an ambassador for Jamaica as a scout leader, but in several Caribbean countries in, in the United States, and once you go there, you know, I've been in camp where I have to make reggae music because you're from Jamaica, so you must know reggae music. You know, people come and bring all different type of reggae shirts. So reggae is a heartbeat and I'm honored. You know, a lot of people have to download reggae. I grew up amongst all these celebrities, Bob Marley, you watch them come and eat, you know, so reggae is everywhere in Jamaica. Okay. Listen, thank you for having me, sir. Thank you for that Dean and we'll be hearing a lot more from you later and I, I would just like to introduce um, Patricia Wharton from London Ch Chalk Hill radio station which Fresh FM we will be doing a lot of uh, collaboration with we started yesterday welcome Patricia onto the platform good to see you and Winston Hislop my good friend General Saint We're definitely going to be hearing a lot from him his book and other surprises in terms of the work that he's doing. 
Now our special now over to our special special guest, Jackie Knight from the Ministry of Culture. We work very closely together, both on Reggae Month and uh, Jamaica 60. So Jackie, great to see you. Thank and you very over much. To you for the next few minutes. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Rudy Page. Uh, you, you yourself is a dynamo marketing and PR personality, so I'm following your footsteps. Thank you. Um, great to be among uh, great people here on this platform. And um, to all our listeners out there, we want to welcome you to the Reggae Global and Cultural 2022 highlights this afternoon. I'm pleased and honored to be in a very strategic position with the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, spearheading the marketing, PR and media relations program in terms of our partnership for a very dynamic program we call Reggae Month which is 15 years old. And what is very different this year is that Reggae Month is a signature year part of our Jamaica Diamond Jubilee 60th celebrations. So we're very excited about this, this significant period because as a marketer, and I'm sure all of you on this platform know, brand reggae is one of the most powerful, powerful brands for Jamaica and across the world in music. And so we're very excited and rich. My background is tourism marketing. Uh, for the last, I would say 35, 40 years, I've had the distinct pleasure of working for the Jamaica Tourist Board. My very, very first job and so my passion is about promoting brand Jamaica, working for the Jamaica Tourist Board in the United States office, uh, studied tourism, studied marketing, and um, also travel the world in terms of promoting all that makes brand Jamaica proud. I've been part of the concept of Reggae Month. Um, developed and conceptualized from inception 15 years ago, having worked closely with the Marley family, um, where, you know, the great reggae icon is the inspiration of Reggae Month. Um, his birthday, February 6th, and several other artists celebrate birthday in the month of February. Did you know? Dennis Brown, February 1. Did you know? People like... Um, um, Bunny Rugs. Uh, with who? Bunny Rugs. Bunny Rugs, of course. He's on the third. February 6th is Bunny Rugs too. Dennis yes. Brown, Sean Kingston on the third. Ayaka, Ayaka on the fifth. Derek Harriet on the sixth. We have Cotty Rance on the twelfth. Uh, Chino McGregor on the twelfth. Uh, Javinci on the ninth. So it's a very exciting month. Coffee's on the sixteenth. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Yes. Chris Martin on the 14th, George, Sophia George on the 21st. Um, we have Baby Sham on the 24th, Cecile on the 24th, Colleen Davis on the 23rd, um, Kimani Mali on the 26th, and Ras Pen, I'm sure Penko, you know Ras Penko on the 22nd. So I just I just made that little list today so I could mention it because it's a powerful month of great Jamaica brand. And I want to big up all, all those who are on the platform today, Nadine Sutherland, I know she has to go. Um, Reggae Month program at Jamaica 60th is quite a dynamic one. I also want to welcome on the platform a very special guest as part of our music industry, Mr. Wes Rock, a Jamaican reggae artist he, with a very special flavor. He's joining us this afternoon. I only met him in December. And I must say his personality, his style, his panache is just very good for brand Jamaica. So I thought it was an opportunity to join us and you'll hear briefly from him. Um, I would, I think uh, we would, it might be an opportunity to turn over to Nadine or should I? Yes, thank you, thank you for that, um, Jackie. So You're on the platform and then I will come back to my presentation, but I'm very excited about what we have. Reggae Month is spearheaded by the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport. We have put together a robust program, which we launched on January 31st, right back to March, March 1st. And we have the Diaspora Market, which is a very important partner with us. We want to thank you, Rudy, through Fresh FM that has been partnering with us for the last three years, the Jamaica Tourist Board, Jamaica Cultural Development Commission, Jamaica um, 
the Jamaica Reggae Industry Association, the partners, the Federation, Jamaica, the Ministry of Tourism are all key partners of Reggae Month and several other partners. Our program is consisting of a, a number of things. It includes programs such as forums of this to bring education, awareness, understanding the value of what Brand Jamaica can do. We have produced a number of programs and features, including conversations in studio with several of our reggae icons. So we want you to follow and monitor right across the world what's happening with Reggae Month. It's now dubbed as the longest music festival in the world, one month of Reggae Month. The intention is for it to grow from strength to strength. Last year, for the first time, I developed a concept called Reggae Meets Black History. And so how can we even forget that Black History Month in Jamaica, but I know not in the UK, um, in the United States is February. So it's a natural fit for those on the platform in the United States also to twin Black history with reggae. We have a number of concerts. I will tell you a little bit more as we go along about the well-produced array of concerts that we have. Um, prior to COVID, we had to, with these concerts were staged across Jamaica live and direct. And you know, the vibe, the energy, the spirit that goes into it, we miss all of that. Mm -hmm. So this year it's virtual. As you can see, we're on the platform. So I'm struggling with it. I'm trying to find ways to just keep the spirit alive. You know, um, I think it's only the United States in Florida, the city of Miramar that's actually having live events. So we rely on our media partners across the world. We say to you we're at home, have some Facebook parties, download Reggae Jamaica app. We want everybody to get on your phone, everybody on this platform right now, download Reggae Jamaica app and you will get live online on time, over a hundred events happening daily, daily. I'm gonna tell you about the exciting programs, the forums, the, the concerts that we have lined up for the rest of the month and also recognition of the industry through several award platforms that are being held in Jamaica and through our various partnerships. Um, I can continue to elaborate, but if you want me to come back and I yeah, can if, go a little If you bit come more. back, yeah, we'll, we'll go with Nadine. So back to you, Donovan, to Thank you very much. And as we transition to Nadine, I just want everybody to keep this in mind. The theme for Reggae Month is come catch the redeem. Not the redeem, <laughs> the redeem. Okay. All right. Welcome. Yeah, thank you, Janet. Very nice. Uh, Nadine, you can come back on now. Um, and like I said, um, we've been doing so much. And um, me and Mr. Ferrari, we he was the one who built my website, reggae.university. And that's what we do, Janet. We promote reggae and it's Ironically, every day on my show, I promote Black History Month as well. So it's not just through February alone. We do it all year round. Now, Nadine, you've been a stalwart in the industry. You've seen it all. Um, you've done so many shows. You've been a top artist making the charts. What would you say is the difference now between when you started out getting the recognition compared to the, not say the young, but the artists in, in today's industry? Yeah, say the younger artist. It's okay. I'm okay. <laughs> quite all right with that. Um, I must confess that I have an issue now with um, mm. what you say, um, quality, mm. quality. Um, yes, there. Are, I, I think that some of the talents they need to be developed. Um, I think it's a different kind of reality that is happening because you know when a DJ is is no back in the days was presented probably publicly, he spent years honing his skills in the dance hall, mm -hmm. you know, like on chatting and all of that. So you know you have to come good, and as a result of you know you don't want a bottle of stone and you go home and do your homework. So when you present yourself, you are you know, you're on, you, you, you are basically practiced and honed. Mm -hmm. By the time you do the records, your voice is developed. It is honed because you have some degree of practice. I'm finding it lacking in some sense. I feel that we don't have preparatory works for our artists. And I feel that um, the music also have suffered. There are good quality music being produced in Jamaica. Let's not negate that. 
Yes. But in terms yeah. of what was then and what was now, if we put the percentage of good music back in the days to good music and good artists, there, there is lacking. There is a lack. Mm. I believe that people get too hyped too quickly and become superstars too quickly without yes. doing the work. Mm -hmm. And I am, you know, I... People like to speak about the 90s and they say that 90s dance halls still reign, but 19 dance halls look at the talent that was presented. There's Bougie Banton, there's Terra Fabulous, there's Spraga Benz, there is just, just incredible artists that was presented with talent, with lyrical skills, their voice. And just as I said before, their voices were honed and developed, you know? So I'm having a problem, I must say right now, in terms of, I feel we can do a lot more with how we are presented on record and on stage. Um, and I'm having an issue. That, that's just a little issue I have, but not negating that there are also good music that, they, that has yes. come out of Jamaica. Yes, and it's coming you. out of Jamaica presently. Yes, thank you for that. Because artists like you and others are really doing all they can to make sure that happened. Now, one other thing, being a media person to myself and someone who grew up in reggae and know uh, mostly all the artists i've spoken and interviewed a whole bunch of them a lot of people come to me and say okay the dance hall side of it is what bothers reggae and jamaica at the same time in terms of crime do you as an artist who done dance hall track i mean terra fabulous and you did one of the biggest track in reggae history it's in my top 100 do you think that um the artists them really do things that really promote crime or is it their environment that they grew up in? I think it's a dual thing. Um, I grew up in the country. So in terms of speaking with authority about inner city living, I cannot speak with authority. Nonetheless, I know a lot of my friends are inner city youths or grew up in the inner city, which is a different reality. I remember, you know, this is a very meaningful conversation that I had with Beanie Man. It was at Rotterdam in 2018, and we're speaking about the difference of me being a country girl and him being a ghetto youth. He said, when I went to the country, I can see where my food is going to come from because oh. the chicken in the coop will no say somebody going to kill it for the Sunday dinner. He said, when you're in the ghettos, many days you don't know how you're going to eat. Wow. So it's a different kind of reality. And I'm not saying um, there's some people that will say that them they go hungry and them never get into crime, but that is environment and that is like a rural existence. Mm -hmm. You always have mango pan tree. You always have a banana down a gully where we grow. You can just go if I go get some water and, and find something and boil it, right? So there are different realities. I don't want to be judgmental in terms of uh, you know certain songs that are presented. I I'm gasping mm. now because I think there is a problem. The problem with it is that people are trying to outdo each other in terms mm -hmm. of the level of violence that is presented in the music, which is, even if you're from that environment, it is, it is disturbing. Right. I am disturbed by it and I'm not going to accept it and tolerate it, not because it is disturbing. But I can't really say that, you know, when a man put violence, well, back in the days, is that, that it wasn't his reality, mm. that he lived it in an inner city environment, you know? So. Mm. Yeah, great, great, great answer. And I thank you for that. Um, I don't want to ask all the questions because I know Wayne is a personality. Dean, you grew up in your area and Alexandra and everybody else. If anybody else want to ask you a question before you leave, so go ahead. Okay. Um, hi, Nadine. Hi. Uh, um, about what? One of the great performances we saw here in Atlanta before the entire COVID thing was you at that uh, Mikey Sparkle Family Fun Day. Good to see you again. Thank you, Mom. And it wasn't uh, even a band, it was tracks. I miss band. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Thank you. Nadine Thank is you, still Brian. Nadine. Yeah. Um, you made a great point, Nadine. I'm going to piggyback on that part of the conversation, if you don't mind. Um, we're very concerned about lyrics, uh, the lyrical content and quality of reggae right now. But, you know, um, when you look back at the greatness of reggae over the years, it's been 
the cultural expression that it brings, the, the reflection of the social existence that the music, art, the artist finds himself in. And um, I always argue that before we beat up an artist for violence and for the kind of stuff, we must wonder if that's not what they're exposed to. If that, if, are they commenting on what they've seen? Are they singing what they live? So I really appreciate that point, but I would ask you, Nadine, you could just expand a little bit more on your point about doing the work. Um, social media has made a lot of persons entering the field of music feel like I can just sing something and post it and get a million views and I'm a superstar. So can you take a moment to expand on what you mean by putting in the work as a reggae artist who's been there? And a done? million views, that don't mean that people know you. It means right. it's a million views that you can buy. Right. That can be manipulated. People are seeing these million views. Some mm -hmm. of them people have millions view. I may say, oh, them. And it's not a generational <laughs> thing. When I ask my nieces, they're like, we don't know this person. Their music is not being played in the dance hall. You don't hear their music on the radio. You see it on social media and you, have, you can buy your views them. This is what is happening now in terms of people thinking, wow, him have a million view. If that mean him hot. No, that can mean he bought it. So we right. always have to factor in that in terms of, you know, what we're putting in our heads, everything like views, like views. Listen, I think I have one follower, one follower. I don't think I'm excited on social media. I try as Leela Ikea Mustang who said, Miss Sutherland is a way of keeping um, your, your fans engaged. Now, when I reframed it, it was different. But before that, me never knew fancy social media. I not going to lie about anything, but I know that I'm a popular woman. I know right. that I am a household name across the world. I must have one follower on Instagram. I must see people with a million followers and nobody knows them. So we really have to start put things in perspective in terms of how we value stuff. You know, a lot of people, I'm, I'm seeing this and it really does bother me. It bothers me to see somebody with a million views and in people's head and then them come and sing the song and the audience is like, what is that? They don't right. even know the songs. Mm. So we, we have to be very careful. There needs to be a reevaluation, a reassessment of us now. Because a million views don't necessarily mean anybody knows you. It, it could mean that you have the money that you can buy the million views. I agree. Good. Thanks. I agree. Uh, Dean, you had a question? Unmute, unmute, Dean. And quickly, boy, when it comes to Crystal, when I see Nadine, I start to get so excited. So because <laughs> maybe all next year I won't even stop talking to her. I salute you. I congratulate you. Being somebody who grew up in the art of reggae, I grew up, I can tell you, all the DJ. I know from when D the man had dropped the fence in the hermitage, but you know, I beg for us to sing on the mic from Sangi Davis, Sasha. So I know reggae. I know Nadine before she were born, you know. <laughs> I knew hermitage from in the 60s, and she'll never lose state lose her status. And I salute you. Somebody I said, reggae is not, you know, when we are town as a town man. My backyard, they are gold, and my front yard, they over hermitage. The pot go on, and the bird, you have some man who go shoot bird for it kind of, so you survive a hermitage. So, but Reggae, you know, right now I have a Dwayne Stevens shirt on me now. When I see Dwayne Stevens coming to my scout meeting, I see from my earth cell. If you say, no, but Nadine, what you're saying, I support you a thousand percent. And um, I'm having a program, it's called Let's Talk with children who are looking for their career. And I would like to invite you, if there's any musician that would like to be any children or child, I wanna be a musician to give them some hints, some tips on what direction they should go to maintain, to be a Nadine Sutherland. And thank you very much for the hard work that you're doing, ma'am. Thank you. Thank if you, I Jamie. might jump in now, can, Go ahead, Jackie. I, I would love to share my very own congratulations to you as a female <laughs> artist, as an outstanding woman. I believe we're in the same age group, Nadine, because I, I went, I'm a St. girl, 
And I remember you were. I remember, I know, I know. I, I know the Andrews girl down the road. So it was always a thing between St. Hugh's girl and Andrews girl. But let me tell you, in my era, when we hear Nadine Sutherland, this little girl from St. Andrew going to sing, oh my God, I just remember I got so excited. I felt like, I felt proud. There was a pride in us as girls, you know, coming from girls' school. And when we talk about the FET days, and Nadine is going to perform at the FET, <laughs> we got excited. So, you know, the Calabar boys, the KC boys, and things I'm like right. that. Yes, so I want to really big you up and just say, you know, I'm proud to see where you have reached and um, lots of respect to you. And I would love, we would, we would love to ensure that you are a Jamaica 60th ambassador, cultural and music ambassador. We will ensure that happens. You have been on the platform. There is, we have some programs that speak to women in reggae and certainly we're going to be working on uh, with the Gleaner some supplements featuring women and you without a doubt I know you are one of the selected individuals for uh, Kamala Harris in, as part of our inauguration so I want to say great respect to you um, my the my guest on the platform uh, West Rock, I would love for you to make a comment as an artist before you go because you were sharing some of the concerns and the sentiments of artists relative to the expressing of themselves in the various community and why they do certain music. music. So I would love to welcome Mr. West Rock before Nadine leave, just to share your thoughts as an artist to artist, if that's okay on the platform. Thank you very much for that, Jackie. West Rock? Yes, indeed. Uh, West Rock is here, are you hearing me? Yeah, we can loud yeah. and clear. Okay, so West Rock is probably one of the newest sensation in music now. I can't because I really want to send a message to inspire through this difficult time that we're going through because I'm a businessman. And, uh, you know, to take time with the business to do music, you really have to do I think you're bringing up the yeah, 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 bad connection. I'm not hearing you. We're having so, a challenge with so your line. I have a reality. Yeah, we're I having really a challenge with to, your line. With you know, push forward. He's not hearing you. Yeah. My life where I've been successful in business, okay. Okay, we're, we're bear with you. Try, try again, Wes Rock. We're having a problem with your hearing you, but we'll bear with you a little bit longer. Okay, are you hearing me now? That's better. Yeah. yeah. Don't move. Okay, so what I was saying to you is that I have a reality that um, affects the way I was grown to where I'm at now. So it has been a transition from being poor to being exposed to what a good life is all about. So I really wanted to you. I want to use my life experience now to inspire the world, especially this at this time where so many people need inspiration going through the pandemic and so on. So I've always want to be different. So what I did was to um, fuse the traditional country music and reggae music. And I came up with what is referred to as country reggae with the particular sound, which is very, very, um, you know, interesting. A lot of people are gravitating to the sound. And, uh, you know, the response has been encouraging. And I must say to Nadine, I, I salute you and uh, the, the comments that you have made in relation to the... the um, the lyrical content of our musician today, you know, is much to be desired. But the thing is that we all have our own realities that we have to face. And the fact is that we have to all you know, come together at some point 
and make the change. You know, life, life is about change and um, it's a dynamic world we're living in. So we just have to face the realities and be strong and do what is right from our neck of the woods. So it's West Rock, the best rock. Uh -uh. Okay. Thank, thank you for, for that. Are you hearing me? The best rock. Yeah, yeah. we've got the essence of your message. So thank you very much for that, West Rock. I'm, I'm now going to move back to Nadine. Is there anything that you'd like to say in terms of response before you leave? Oh, no, not at all. I, I'm just happy to have been able to speak. I mean, I'm sorry that I have to go, but um, it was wonderful. It was wonderful to see you all. And that's all I can say. I, I, I just happy have reggae month, y'all. Happy reggae month. Happy reggae month. You'll be back again. Yeah, Nadine, no. <laughs> Definitely. But I just want to add something, yeah. though. Yeah. People don't like this part of, um, people like to say reggae is mm -hmm. about you know, politics and all of that. But reggae encapsulate for me, the essence of the voice of people. Um, a lot of people don't like when we speak, you know, use reggae for sexuality. Mm -hmm. Reggae, you know, some of these young ladies and the sexual narratives, men also with sexual narratives, probably for some ears it is scratched, probably for some people it's hard to digest. But let's not negate that reggae, um, that sexuality is a part of our lives a part of our beings. Um, people are on different stages of their journeys. So they're gonna express themselves differently. And just for us to just be respectful of the different narratives that are out there. Great point, wow. Reggae so I really wanna express that. The we sexiest genre. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's a form yeah, of it's art. A, it's, so. a, it's a yeah. sexy genre and it's not that, it's not coming from dancehall only it's coming mm -hmm. from mental yes from the beginning yeah right from the beginning of time it has been used as, as an expression of our sexuality mm -hmm. our dancing is an expression of our sexuality we are mm -hmm. african people so we whine we use our body and dance putting it very, very <laughs> we do we use our buttocks and dance that's how african people dance right yes. so we mm -hmm. need to also look at it from not only from a lot of us are fueled and want to hold on to the you know one aspect of reggae but not appreciative and speak about the other aspect of reggae that is not coming from dance all that is coming from mental that is coming from our african traditions yes yeah. So let us be let us be mindful as we move along and, and not trying to box reggae into one aspect and not allowing the other aspect to be appreciative of it. Probably we our palates cannot stomach some of the how it's it's put across lyrically, and that's okay. But I don't like when it's denounced and I don't like when people look down on it because we're not it that's not embracing the totality of who we are. Yeah. But reggae in itself, it scores very high for inspiring people in terms of mental wellness, mental health. There's lots of evidence. Exactly. Exactly. We're not, when well, we appreciate that. Makes. We appreciate that and yeah, I hold strongly yeah. and it makes me very yeah. proud that we were able to chant down Babylon, chant down apartheid, okay. chant okay. down, you know, yeah. open up the gates, get up, stand up, it's still being sung. Yep. Yeah. And we hold on to that and we appreciate that. But we have to also have the discussion, the truthful discussions about the other aspect of reggae that yeah. a lot of us don't want to have discussions about. Yeah. That yeah. is my point. It's part, right. part of life, isn't it? Actually, Patricia, I'd like Patricia. Um, Patricia has a, a strong cultural background. And uh, so is, is there anything you'd like to add from your perspective, Patricia? Okay, so greetings everybody. I was actually just signing out, so that was that was good timing. So um, I'm I'm always surprised at the, the fantastic invites that I get uh, from Rudy. That I've I, I've grown to adore all of the great work uh, that he's done. And so I guess being born in the UK and not of Jamaican uh, parentage, uh, but from the Caribbean, from Africa nonetheless, mm -hmm. I have to say that reggae is absolutely uh, my first love. And some of my best holidays, of course, have been spent um, in, in Jamaica. Uh, and it's a pleasure to meet uh, Nadine. I've done some whining, of course, to some of your tracks. So I understand <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I thank you for that, uh, for that opportunity and giving me the action and all of that kind of stuff. So that, that's brilliant. I, I do think the conversation is, is fantastic when we're talking about 
uh, young up and coming artists and how we can support them uh, to think about the messages uh, that they are delivering in, in their songs. And it is true that songs uh, have an impact um, as do films, you know, people, many people um, become romantic or aphromantic as a result of a particular song. So therefore, if we're putting other kind of lyrics that aren't so positive, that may also be a trigger for kind of how they respond to some to some of the lyrics. Um, so that's important. But uh, yeah, I thank you for the, the, the privilege the, the short space of time uh, that I was here was fantastic. I'm about to go and do some action now, hence me having to uh, to leave and do some me of that too. very same dancing that the dean <laughs> has described. Me too. I have to go, guys. Thank you so right. very much for having Thank me. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so bless you. Bless up. Bless up. Bless up. See you next Lassa. month. Yeah. National Women's Month. Okay. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. We've got lots going on. And great points that have been made in that, and you'll see that our theme for this year and probably every year, year in terms of reggae, global and culture, we say reggae every day everywhere 100 percent. and we we collaborate with different platforms different stations to ensure that re reggae is going to be spread everywhere so thank thanks for that patricia we brilliant see you guys too. blessed love thank right you, patricia. i'd like us to come back to jackie jackie back to you now to give your overall presentation okay thank you very much rudy <clears throat> Um, just to go into what the, the details of Reggae Month, some of the highlights that we have coming up. We developed a concept last year called Reggae, Young Reggae Ambassadors. Um, this uh, series uh, of concerts are for young upcoming rising stars, potential artists that, you know, have an opportunity, they're on the verge of a breakthrough to the next level. And so this was featured uh, through the female version and the male version. So this year we did a production downtown on the streets of Kingston to make it very unique because we didn't have a create on stage platform. So it's done in a, it's done in a musical um, video type format. And this is coming out starting uh, this weekend. Sorry, it was start, it started on, on, on weekend. Um, yesterday was featured highlights from last year. But next week, Saturday night, will be featured of the Young Reggae Ambassadors for this year, the production that was produced this year. Um, reggae Month TV is the platform that we link with all our partners. And each day from Monday to Friday, 6 p.m., we start a series of activities. So, and that's Eastern Standard Time. Um, 6 p.m., join us and you will see a program of activities. Don't forget to keep checking your Reggae Jamaica app so you can see what's coming up for the day. Young Reggae Ambassador, the artist featured is as a link lineage, Leah Karib, Kalia, Monifa, Vanessa Bongo, Briani, Black Hero, Sean Anton, Yaxta, Jalil, and Dre Island. Those are some of the artists that we have coming up for the Young Reggae Ambassadors series. For this, we're also producing for the first time a concert called Sizzler in Concert. You know, our big artist Sizzler with a 35 piece orchestra. Okay. And Sizzler will have, and that's coming on live mm -hmm. on the 27th. Sorry, let me make sure I give you the right dates for Sizzler in Concert. That will be featured on the. Sorry, I'll get you the date. I don't know why I'm, I'm, I'm going a little blind here. Sizzling concert will feature an array of artists, special arrangements by John Williams, Kingsley Ibo Cooper, Dean Fraser. This is going to be one of our exciting production for this year. The production itself will be produced on the the 20, 20th of this month, and it will be aired on the 27th. I think I have that date wrong. It'll be aired on the 26th. I'm sorry. That's correct. The Saturday, the last weekend of the month will be array of the major concerts. So the 26th, every Friday, every, every Saturday, we also have what is called 
the vintage, the vintage series. And we want to say thanks and big up Frankie Campbell from the Jamaica Association of Vintage Artists. They too, we ensure that they are a partner in the entire series each year. The Reggae Month Vintage Concert will feature Lloyd Lovendere, Mighty Diamonds, Yellow Man, Pam Hall, Fab Five, Lloyd Parks and the We The People Band, Dennis Walks, George Nooks, Boris Gardner, Tristan Palmer, Kevin Isaacs, Horace Andy, and the Tamlins. Remember those guys? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe a little above my age. Yeah, no, we're, 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 we're playing <laughs> most of those on, on Fresh FM as part of the Legends and Pioneers series. Yes, they are. Great, great. Oh, so don't forget, every Saturday, join us with the Java Jamaica Vintage Concert. Another part of our exciting series is the Echoes of Sound System. Mm. Sound system is big thing mm. all over the world. Yeah. And we want to highlight that aspect of it echoes of sound system where a sound system was square off in a friendly rivalry and it started this weekend. So you have the first round, you have the clash for the champion and the champion sound, which will be the last of the month, you will see them winning prizes like 200,000 Jamaicans, top prize, second prize, 100,000, 50,000. The first class sound system was Next Level versus Yumi. Then King Reno versus Rough Cut. That was the second clash. Ghetto Star versus Jam Rock was this, the third clash. And Twin Star versus Kush International. And um, we also, the, the, the winners will go to the semifinals next week, Saturday, right? And then after the semifinal clash, then the square off will be the champion sound at the end of the month. We have judges, Admiral Bailey, Scatter Burrell, Jack Scorpio, Rory from Stone Love. And of course, you know, it's endorsed by the, the, the Sound System Association of Jamaica. And we want to especially thank um, all, all the members of the team who have been intimate with this. This has been creating a buzz. So much so we have another sound system clash from our partner in Miramar, Florida. Um, we call that, the, 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 it's another um, event where we have West Rock is going up, flying up to be a celebrity judge for that. So we'll tell you a little bit more about that. We have the series of webinars and this Tuesday, the webinar will be featured, the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport is going to look at our music and the genre as to how we impact our independent celebration. And Mr. Westrock haven't told you everything about it, but he was also a festival song participant. Mm -hmm. And we want to encourage this year in particular, Jamaica 60th, mm -hmm. artists, musicians from right across the world in the diaspora, you can enter. You don't have to be in Jamaica right now. Mm -hmm. For the first time, we have just opened up the festival song competition. And we started where the producers, the writers also get prize. Um, you produce a music video. So we want to encourage all of you to be a part, to join in anywhere, you know, sing about your sentiments and your history and create a vibe, win or lose or draw, just be a part of it, right? We, I particularly have a keen interest in ensuring that members of the diaspora play an active role in some of what we're doing this year, this time around um, for a festival song competition. We also have the gospel song competition, which gives you a flavor of reggae gospel um, flavor. Um, as we go along, I just want to highlight the conversations that productions that we have had, we featured several of our reggae icons, Marcia Griffith, Judy Moat, Copeland Forbes, because we're not only looking at the arts, but we're looking at the managers and producers. And we can tend to forget that. We tend to forget some of the managers who work night and day hard, and they to play a, a critical role, Errol and Shane Brown. We have something called making of a reggae star. Some of the managers that have managed some of our top reggae stars. We have a production featuring Jeremy Harding, Robert Livingston, Donovan Green, King Jammies. And the, the media partners are near and dear to my heart. And I must tell you, 
I am working on a particular forum that's going to focus on all our media partners or reggae stations, all of the, the hosts like yourselves who do a fantastic job. And so I've been part of the Reggae Icon Awards Committee, which is in Florida. And thanks to the city of Miramar, Alexa Commissioner Alexandra Davis, she has produced for the third year, the Reggae Icon Award, Black History Meets Reggae. And so we have a special guest, Mr. West Rock is going to be there. We are honoring, uh, the city of Miramar is honoring Clinton, Clinton Lindsay, a media personality in, in, in the music industry. Anyone here know Clinton Lindsay? Oh yeah, I do. Okay, <laughs> yes. So good. We also have Inner City Circle Band that's been honored this year by the Reggae Icon Award. Last year was given to Third World. The year before the inaugural year was given to Freddie McGregor. And the recommendation I made was for the consideration of a special Jamaica 60th Reggae Icon Award. And guess who that is getting that award? Take one guess. Alive? <laughs> the great Bob Marley. Who oh. else is the greatest uh, icon? Yeah. So the, the legendary Bob Marley will be recognized with the Global Reggae Icon Award. Excellent. And, and so this is a buzz that's taking place. He deserves it. Mm -hmm. And I, we were able to get the entire family to come out and join that evening. Um, so far, Sidella will be there accepting the award on behalf of her dad. Rita Mali will be there. She'll be given a proclamation as wife for the great work she has been doing. And in Jamaica on Bob Marley's birthday, an exhibition was just opened by the prime minister and the minister of culture. You can go online and follow the Roots 77 celebrations of Bob Marley, which was just featured. So all of that you can still see if you go on, on the link. Um, I know, Rudy, you're, you're tuned into all of this, which took place on Bob Marley's birthday itself, where uh, Roots, the theme is Roots uh, Liberty, 77 of Bob Marley's birthday. So you will see his show that was packaged and produced here in Jamaica with all the Marley boys and specially invited guests. So there's a lot of production element that is there for you to, to take a view. We want to highlight also the final of the biggest concert that took place last year. VP Records um, out of New York collaborated and they produced the Barry Hammond show. That got about uh, over a couple million, million hits last year. And so that was a special highlight. Again, it's taking place. And Barry Hammond, Chris Martin, Romain Virgo, Marcia Griffiths, Taurus Riley, Richie Spice, Dennis Morgan. I think you may have to come back to me, Ruth. Yeah. Come back to me a little bit. I, 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 think, I think the audience is getting a bit out of They hand. got excited, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, just they want to join. They join. <laughs> yeah, just want to quickly add, um, you see the picture behind me. Before, you know, I, I left Jamaica over 12 years. And this is where the first cultural day ever kept in Jamaica. You know, as Mr. Ramdeen said, but many of you who have never known it, Professor Barry Shevans in the seventies keep the first cultural day. And I saw Miss Lou and Rani, and I had a function for, it was Bob Marley's birthday in Hermitage Park. And I present Caesar Kolonji. You know, I, I, I grew up and I said, you know, nobody recognized Bob Marley and all these guys. They would come and have lunch and the world recognized them before us. And I tried my best as an ambassador for scouting, tried to recognize our ambassador. So I recognized Cesar Colonji received an award there. Etana rec received an award that I personally give it Etana. Um, Sasha received an award. And I'm proud to say I've given Yellow Man, I've given Third World the ambassador's award, I've given Mood to Baruka the ambassador award when they come to the state. So I would celebrate Bob Marley's birthday every year in Hermitage. I, you know, these are some of the things I noticed. The media, they don't cover these events and I would really like reggae to be noted, you know. And when you travel, people ask for reggae and abroad it is recognized before the Jamaican media. You know, and I'm proud to say that you guys are recognizing our reggae ambassadors. 
you know, but I can say I don't just talk the talk. I have met all these musicians. Being a man, as I said, they used to jump the fence, come a silver arc dance, and you mm. know, you watch these guys grow, and you said, Wow, you know, and I, I really appreciate that. I'm glad that put me down him quiet down now. So, Miss that, that <laughs> okay, yes, thank, I thank think they heard, they heard me in the background and they started getting very excited, you know, about Fire. what's going on. <laughs> but, um, I know Mr. Percival of uh, West Rock is still on the line and he shared with you a little bit of his journey, yeah. So, um I, I still want him to elaborate a little bit more about his music, his, his music yeah. in the reggae, reggae fraternity. Okay. And well, so, I, I hope you can hear me a little better here now. I'm yeah, changed location. Hear you. Yeah, we can do as well. Yeah. You know, um, today is a special day for my wife and myself. So I'm actually out, you know, enjoying the day. It's a Sunday. And um, the little distortion in the background with the Wi Fi you know, pose a challenge, but I'm happy to be back and um, online uh, with you. And um, yes, I'm, ha I'm also happy to share my journey um, as an artist. Well, you know, um, as I said to you before, that my journey is one of inspiration. You know, um, I, I grew up through the, 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 the struggles, you know, of rural poverty. Um, my mother pushed me to go to school and get a good education. You know, I was able to walk away with three um, degrees, two masters and a bachelor's, you know, and, and I went off into business and, you know, was successful in several businesses. And then, you know, um, during the pandemic, I decided that one of my greatest passion, music, I would uh, pursue it to inspire people who are distressed and, and going through a difficult time. So I wanted to use my life experience to inspire people because I know there are a lot of people who are struggling. A lot of people, you know, are given hope, hope, um, hope and, and, and are adjusting the value of decision, you know, and I felt that my life could be used. So I came up with um, the, 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 a, a, a creative way of sending the message, which is really to mix the country music, which we all grew up on, you know, with reggae and the, the, the sound that it gives, um, as I told you before, it is really catching on, you know, to, the, to, to a number of people across the world. And I said, you know, I'm the newest sensation, but I have so much because in music, I write, I, I create the melody, I do everything I produce. 360 Global is an entertainment company that, uh, you know, I am pushing to also develop other artists. So I'm not just thinking about myself. I'm just thinking about um, creating a platform where positivity, um, conscious music can be disseminated through whoever may want to, you know, because the, the state of music here in Jamaica and perhaps the most part of the world, you know, is changing um, to negativity. And we don't want to reach to a point where negativity is what is a, a dominant um, message. We want positive uh, music to, to transcend. The same thing that happens with reggae music when it originated, we don't want that to change. And West Rock is a part of that um, change. So I'm happy to if I might quickly audience. comment, if I yes. might quickly comment, one of the main reasons why I uniquely invited him here, because we have some community uh, transformational leaders on this yes. platform. And what I admire about him, having just met him in, um, in December, where he opened a celebrity entertainment salon, is that he's working with various communities to develop talents. I just wanted yes. to share that. Um, just because I, his story was, was very touching to me, having come from what, seven, a family of seven children himself. Nine to be exact. Nine, right, right. Nine Barefoot boys. boy. Barefoot boy. I didn't even know that you had so many degrees, <laughs> but to become no an entrepreneur, we have been challenged. Year after year after year, you hear the political leaders, the church leaders are struggling to find the answers for why is Jamaica crime right, 
crime rate so high. And the concern that exists with some of our entertainers who are, you know, imprisoned and so forth, and when they should be role model. And so we more we need more entrepreneurs that can invest in talent, entrepreneurs like himself who understand it, because that's a struggle we have. I served uh, three years on the entertainment advisory board for the minister as well, not just working as a marketing consultant. And one of the things that we struggle with is the financial part of it, the investment part of it, um, where artists are not able to do, you know, the producers. I get calls every single day for artists wanting to just get a life. And so they're inspired. This is what they know. We don't have to beat up on everyone if you cannot make it as a lawyer or as an attorney or a doctor, but you're creative in your own space. And so through your media, you know, our media partners or community leaders here, um, you have a great ambassador here who can, you know, help to collaborate the efforts. And um, the city of Miramar welcome him. And he's going to be part of the Icon Award during the, during the, the, the dinner, the Afro-Curry Festival, as well as um, the dance hall. So thank you very much for being yeah. on the platform today and very inspirational. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a great story, Wes, Wes Rock. And that was one of the reasons on Fresh FM Radio London that we put together Kingston Seven Beats originally with Dean and some of his um, uh, colleagues in Hermitage and across Augustown because what we said, we wanted to give a platform to artists who were known and re readily wouldn't get the attention of going on a global platform. And, uh, and it's worked well for us and we continue and we can continue to do it. So yeah, congratulations. You could just send your MP3 to us and Fresh FM, we, we will put you on the diamond playlist. Uh, for this month, wow. this reggae month, and uh, make sure your music gets amplified. And I'm Jeff sure. can also send it to um to, to me to Wayne and, and Wayne. Yeah, or Rudy can send it to us because we're both media personalities here. Yeah, and we do that same thing. We promote um international and local artists all over the world. So yeah, um, doing it every time. <clears throat> we want to make sure that we get these out. Um, the, the show is also broadcast in Florida, if I'm not mistaken, too. So yeah, okay. Yeah, so we, we, we carry both Wayne Hall's show and the, the, the Reggae Voyage show. So again, you're, you're getting, you know, that extra push. It's one listener at a time, isn't it, music? <laughs> one listener whichever, at a time. Whichever way you look at it, mm -hmm. one listener. Right. I'm so happy for this because, you know, um, it makes my life much easier and better because, you know, we're just a part of this one um, regime just to ensure that we make a difference wherever we are, you know, and I'm happy for this. And, and I hope Jackie's taking notes so that she can give me the information where I can get the link there. And I really look forward to come to England one of these days. Well, you know, as I keep telling Donovan and Wayne, London is the headquarters. I always have to. Yeah. <laughs> It's in our future somewhere. Yes, yes. But can I can I just say, um, West Rock, kudos to you and one for for stepping out, man, with a a totally different flavor. Mm, yes. You know, growing up in Jamaica, we get a fair dose of country and western back in the day. There were nights I can tell you names like Conway Twitty and and, <laughs> and Rod, so Marty Robin, you know, Marty Robbins who put who put a whole a whole lifetime in three wow. verses of a song, you know? Yes. And so to see you take it, uh, the reggae and, and to take that and make this great um, combination yes. is awesome. But I'm even more impressed by your story that yes. um, you managed to be one of those person who emerged out of a certain situation, yes. but has not let it dominate um, the, the message. And so, Definitely a story I'd like to share with my audience, West Rock. So yes, wow. uh, we'll be getting your info because that's what we need to spread, that it is possible. We understand why someone will talk about if they just grew up in gunshots, they're going to talk about gunshots. But we yeah. also want folks to learn that, you know what, we can take a deep breath and reach for even that which we might not have been used to. So thanks. Yeah. Great, great. Thank you very much for having me. 
And of course, Thanks that talent can be nurtured. And, and Rudy, I want to thank you, West Rock, and I want to transition, if it's okay, to just share a little bit briefly yeah. on um, to wrap up my presentation on Jamaica yeah. 60th and where we are. We kicked off on the countdown for Jamaica 60th, and I want to. I'm, I'm very happy. I want to thank you for your hard and dedicated work for the last year. You have been one of the leaders in starting the message that Jamaica 60th. Is and so it's a signature year for us. Fortunately, we're behind in terms of, of getting the program as a whole out there in the market because of COVID in particular. Yeah. And so we started the year with unveiling of the logo. And you have the logo in your backdrop. Mm -hmm. um, we have an official secretariat that you can reach out to. So once you have a program, once you're a media partner, and everybody I'm looking at this platform from, from right across Atlanta, New York, Connecticut, I, um, Rudy is gonna you know, work with me in terms of ensuring that all of your strategic partners for Jamaica 60th celebration. We are now pushing out for you to also have your programs in your regions. Send us the information, work through your diaspora or through the secretariat in sharing with us what you have planned for Jamaica 60th, whether it be a legacy initiative or a particular event in your program, and we building out the program. We unveil the logo, we unveil some, some stilts and some video shots. Reggae Month for, forms the first period of activities for Jamaica 60th. Following that, there's a the next period is going to be starting in June, which is Diaspora Caribbean Diaspora Month and Caribbean Heritage Month, I believe, in the United States, yeah. where we will start a series of activities right up to independence. So independence, we want everybody to come to Jamaica, but we know the reality, everyone can come to Jamaica. So in your territories, the high commissions, the consulates are leading the charge in terms of working with programs and partners, and they're going to put together a list of what's happening in your community. Yeah. There will be lots of packages. Jamaica Tourist Board is promoting packages from all the different destinations so they can partner with the radio stations and yourselves. I want to partner with all of you in terms of promotions, hitting the market in terms of winning trips to Jamaica, um, all the events. We from the legacy side, we'll be unveiling a number of monuments throughout Jamaica in various communities. And so you can look out for that schedule. A schedule is going to be um, unveiled. Signature events will be taking place throughout the year. So major activities can be recognized and dubbed on the Jamaica 60th program. I know Steve Higgins as an artist, he's doing a road show that's endorsed in various cities. I know Atlanta is one of them. Texas is one of them. Uh, London is one of them. Should be there for the Commonwealth Games and all of the activities that's taking place in the UK and several other activities that's taking place. For Reggae Month also, I forgot to mention Jamaica Day. The 25th is designated for Jamaica Day. And what 20, does that mean? 25th of? February. 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 I'm sorry. February. But let me tell you the concept of that. It is led by the Ministry of Culture, sorry, the Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. Jamaica right. Day is meant to sensitize the children the educational component. And so we don't want to leave them out in all of this because, you know, there's a, this thinking oh. that reggae is really for an, a particular age group, a particular genre. Mm -hmm. We want to use and through education and the schools and the concept of going through university cultural programs to highlight the culture of Jamaica and remind everybody what Jamaica means, the history of several of our artists through the decades and how it has impacted their lives and understanding the culture. And then the final period after independence would be uh, our Heroes Weekend celebration. The prime minister is going to honor 60 people from various 
your uh, location, destination across the world, combination of the diaspora, will have the national honors, but there would be special awards. And each diaspora area will be identifying outstanding community leaders who will be recognized. So all the concerts will be hosting their own Jamaica Diamond Jubilee Awards. So we encourage you to partner with the consulates, the ministry for your territory in looking in submissions. Now remember national awards this year, the final date is usually the end of March cutoff date. So if you feel that someone is worthy of a national award this year, make sure you go online, look down, look at what you're doing, um, look at who you want to submit the application and ensure that you're on time for national awards because it's a 60th year special award this year. And um, again, I would really, really want to thank you with your homeward bound promotion that kicked off from last year. I know you're trying to get lots of teams, lots of people coming to Jamaica. Yeah. That's the spirit we yeah. want to encourage right across the world. Absolutely. And we've started to, to support some of the smaller hotels uh, in, in Jamaica as well. We've helped, you know, fashion their package so that will be shared you know, throughout the diaspora. So we've got a lot coming up. Actually, what I would like, and I was glad to hear that, what I would like June though, from a UK perspective, June is Windrush month. You know how important Windrush is. So there's going to be a lot of events um, here in the UK relating to Windrush. So I think if that's that's the key activity description for the, uh, the events and activities, we've got lots of school groups as well increasingly more schools including Windrush within you know within their curriculum as well lots of community organizations so I think that kind of recognition as part of Jamaica 60 will really give uh, that international boost along with um Caribbean uh, Caribbean American Heritage Month which we'll Thank be, you for we'll be that taking part in that as well we should look at seeing which artists can you know we can get as role models to come and join. absolutely and we're going to be coming to speak to one of those very soon in terms of winston Hedslock, also known as general saint he, he's really at the, at the top of that so that's a, a great overview jackie because um it, it fits in very much with what we've tried to do with the young people and dean especially for february the 25th being you know jamaica day as well that just adds even more to amplifying Jamaica into that competitive space. Because as we all know, the world is a very competitive place. So you've still got to get into the race. You've still got to get into the marketplace. You've got to get the attention of people. So I think what you've outlined is, is really a great start. And we, we really help with our colleagues get that message out into our communities. So and use them as, and they use their leverage, you know, We've got an event coming up on Palm Sunday called uh, Bringing Jamaicans and Irish Communities Together because part of Jamaica 55, we had a, an event. So we had Irish darts in there, we had dominoes, we had the mayor with people from all different backgrounds. And uh, we had um, our, our a great, uh, I can't remember her name. She's a Japanese saxophonist. She can play everything in Gregory Isaacs. Um, Ah. It's Magoo, yeah, I should remember that. She, she'll tell me off if she hears this. You know, so again, we just showed reggae, Caribbean people, Jamaican people, being able to mix with everybody. and Because that's what we want, friends of Jamaica. So Homeward Bound is also about bringing people from outside of the Jamaican culture to Jamaica and experience our culture being our theme. We want them to experience the culture of going to Jamaica, going as a group and enjoying themselves. And uh, so we're working closely with uh, Jamaica Tourist Board, Diamond Travel, TUI as well. They've been very helpful putting packages together. So even though our, our main month for Homeward Bound may be September when we're there with a two week program of activities, but we're promoting people to go to Jamaica every month. We've got uh, Diana McIntyre Pike from Country Style, one of our key partners. And we're working closely with Diana in, in relation to what we now call community economic tourism. So from a diaspora perspective, we're interested in those local hotels, the small hotels, the attractions, and thinking about how can we make contributions into the local community 
where there's an eco economic and supply chain impact. So a good example in African Gardens, one of the five communities of August Town, they've, they've got a farmer's market, they've got their own brand of uh, drinks. So again, we would be encouraging the diaspora to understand these are the, the kind of things that we, we need to support and then amplify that message back into our friends and families and businesses around the world. So we, we, we do have a strategy that aligns perfect, perfectly with what you're saying. So thank you very much for that. Um, I'd like to come to uh, Winston Hislop. Are you there? General Saint. Right. Yes, I am here, Rudy. I am here. Uh, OK. Sorry, now, sorry. I'm just going to, to share something very quickly. Let's um, just make sure we can do that. Let's have a look. Let's see. Never seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Over to you, General Saint. Mr. Okay. Oh. Um, I'm, 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 I'm used to people asking me questions. Um, probably because I've done that all my life. But I will try to um go through a synopsis about me, and probably a lot of people, you know, don't know about me and what I've done for reggae music and Jamaica. Um, I'll, I'll come back to what you've just um, watched um, a few seconds ago. Um, I was born and I grew up in Jamaica. I came to the UK when I was about 17 years old. I then, um, I went to college for about two years and, but music and performance was always in my blood from growing up as a child in Old Alba Bay. Um, I've always been a music, music blooded kind of person, performance and, you know, winning my first school concert and things like that. And when I left college, I knew I wanted to do something within the entertainment world. And um, I wasn't a great singer, but um, I'm a quick learner. And um, then um, I, I had a place in a place called Grenville Tower, which you probably know about it. It's burnt down a few years ago, killed over 70 people. And um, 
I was living in that in in an apartment in there, and then I started to hook up with, you know, well-known Jamaican um, artists and producers, and um, I was introduced to Janja Laws, and you know, at the time he was he was managing Barrington Levy, Yellow Man, you know, he he, he was the the monster for the '80s in production, and. Um, then you know John Joe, you know I started to I, I was listening to Nadine um, spoke earlier and how she speak about you, you know learning your trade and how you get into the business and how you can you know capitalize on what you've got you know I started in the in the dance I started in a place called the Shabin um, Rudy would know about that in in, in the UK you know those were the days. Those were the days, you know, and I spent every night DJing until I move up to bigger sound system and, you know, just constantly perfected my my art. And then um, my one of my idol within the music business died. Back to what Nadine said a while ago, where our music has got sexuality in it. He was one of he was one of the king for that. But the way how he did it was classy. And that was General Echo. So um, when General Echo died, you know, I've got a friend um, called Eastwood. Now Eastwood was doing music from Jamaica, you know, well-known artists within Jamaica, you know, Dillinger, he, he's, he was a brother of Trinity. And we were friends. And I, you know, I went to the studio and I, I said to Eastwood, let's do this track together. And we did it. It, it was a tribute to General Echo. And, the track came out and went to number one. And that was the start, start of something special with, um, you know, reggae music in terms of, um, there's never been any DJ from the UK has ever break internationally. So here we come to do it. And um, we, we basically started doing we, we do, did that track, that track came out, number one, then we did another one, Bite the Dust. Mm -hmm. And you know what that did, Rudy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was number one for 14 yeah. weeks. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and back to Nadine conversation again, that was the days when records were selling. Yeah. We were selling records. It wasn't, you know, you come and you get a million views. No, we were selling a million records. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. We knew how, you know, when I when when another one battle just got went into the the, the Echoes charts, Greg Isaac was number one with Sunday Morn. We came in at number six. But when we came in at number six, we already sold 70,000 records. And we're not even number one yet. That's how record used to sell. Mm -hmm. So my career spanned right through Europe. When I started. We started, we, we were the first DJ to do the old gray whistle test. Anyone know who the, or what the old gray whistle test is? You know, it's, it's, that is the testament of real music. Yeah. Um, we were the first to go on channel four. We were the first DJ to be doing daytime television in the UK. Um, so we were spreading the DJ gospel and a lot of Jamaican people didn't know about us. It's, it's, it's just weird. A lot of Jamaicans didn't know nothing about us in yeah. terms of, you know, the industry knew us. Yeah. But, you know, the, the, the normal people didn't. And we were, you know, my, I had a number one, I had a number two record internationally in Holland. I mean, the first DJ that did that was Dilinja. And we come year after to have a, a top, you know, top, 10 in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and, and Holland, Belgium. So we were, we were mashing up Europe from the early 80s. From the 80s. You know what I'm saying? When, when I was doing festivals in Europe, there was no reggae festivals in Europe. There was a festival uh, or, or a solo reggae artist performing, you know, Bob, you know, other reggae artists who are very familiar with Europe at the time. But when I'm going to Europe, there was, I'm doing a lot of festival, you know, I, I, I perform 
on stage with Rod Stewart um, in Rotterdam Stadium. And I was getting stoned for, 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 for my music, you know, your people's, you know, and three weeks later, Stop That Train just went crazy in Europe. Yeah. Um, so we've, you know, I've done so much. And then in the 90s, as you know, again, I did the track Oh Carol mm -hmm. featuring Don Campbell. Mm -hmm. and, and that went to the national charts again. And, you know, I start over again in the 90s doing TVs and everything like that in, in, in the UK. And the track went to number one in Portugal. But where it did the most damage was the Philippines. It was number one in the Philippines for three months. You know what I'm saying? So that was fantastic again. And I started, I started to work on an album um, a few years ago, well, probably about four years ago. I started to work on an album. And, but I wanted to do something else. I really wanted to do something else. And I did a video of one of the track on the album which which called soldier and i spell it s-o-u-l this is it's behind me there yeah. yeah that that's that's what it is and when i did the track my my producer is an animator robbie you know robbie rudy mm -hmm. and robbie did a um video you know animation video and everyone start to like it and saying wow saying that looks like that that, that just looks like a, a video game and then the penny dropped for me mm -hmm. and i know straight away i wanted to give jamaica i wanted to give jamaica something that jamaica hasn't got i wanted to i i, I was determined to put something in jamaica that is needed in jamaica and possible change the gdp of jamaica <laughs> I created a I created a story called Soldier Kingdom Rise for a video game. Now the pandemic chips in, mm -hmm. and as I said, mm -hmm. I'm a musician. I'm a musician for forty years. That's what I ever do. Yeah, I write songs and all all things like that. But I have never tried to write a book. Mm -hmm. So. I started writing Soldier Kingdom Rise, but I was writing it in a screenplay. Now, what I wanted for Soldier Kingdom Rise is, it's, it, the, the, the old story is based in Jamaica, based around Jamaica, which has never been done up from a video game um, angle. And I wanted to, to present Jamaica in such a way, the story is not now, or then the story is 2093. So it's Jamaica 2093 and what Jamaica would be like 2093, you know, the year 2093. I wanted to give a different outlook of Jamaica. And I started to write. When the pandemic came in, I started to write. And I finished it, but I, I did, as I said, I write it in more of a screenplay. And then, out from that, I wanted to embody the story with a bit of reality. So Nanny is embodied in my story in Soldier Kingdom Rise on a, on a historical level. Um, you've, got to, you've got to read the story to, to understand how that happens. But that's what I did. I embodied Nanny because I, I do believe that Nanny, you know, in today's world, it's all about your branding, what you have. And we don't think that we have to brand Nanny, but we do have to brand her because she's our brand. She's, she's Jamaican brand. So, and you know, I'm very pa patriotic when it comes to Jamaica. Very, very, very patriotic when it comes to Jamaica. Um, I don't like, you know, I don't like if anyone talk anything bad about Jamaica, whether it's true or not, I don't like it. <laughs> Um, so yeah. I decided from, from, from Soldier Kingdom Rise, I decided to write, it's almost as if the ancestors came to me 
and said, do something about Nanny. And, and remember, I go to school in Jamaica. We weren't taught a lot about her because there's only synopsis of her. 90% of documentaries that you see is always synopsis of her, you know, unsure or not sure, unsure or not sure. And I decided that I'm going to write a story of Nanny from my perspective. And this is it. Yeah. Rebirth, a maroon warrior. And I, I've read the book, everybody, and it's a great book. Yes, it's, 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 it's fantastic book. The reviews on it is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I heard you guys spoke um, about the schools, the school yeah. programs that you're doing. You know, this is something that I would love to get involved in yeah. with the book. And come now to where I want to finish off because I don't want to take up too much time, take mm -hmm. up enough already. It's what I'm creating now for Jamaica. Mm -hmm. which is a game called mm -hmm. Soldier Kingdom Rise. You've just seen a little things from it, um, which I'm doing at the moment, mm -hmm. but this is something special. And I'm getting, I'm getting some, you know, massive feedback on it at the moment. You know, people want to get involved and all of that. But um, it is such a big, big story and I wanted to start the story with Jamaica. Excellent. So, so that's where I am. Thank, thank you for that. So, awesome. Uh, Winston. Right, before I come to you, Jackie, uh, what I felt was before really important. OK, go ahead. Yeah. What I thought was really important for you, where I really wanted you to see this, because what Winston has done has opened up the wider creative economy when it comes to reggae, creative talent, the intellectual property, the intellectual capital, the potential that exists through culture and the right. cultural industries and bringing, to, bringing that together by going into that space of a video game and all the skills that it takes because Robbie, his producer, again, we'll have him on another platform. Brilliant, I call him young man, brilliant <laughs> in terms Anime, of- yeah animator his vision and and as you can see that blending of of storytelling and using the technology that's that's that is the future this is the future so so i'd like to see this an integral part of the reigniting a nation that that skill and i'm sure there's others around doing similar things and it'd be great to get them onto a platform where we see all this talent and they're they're sharing the learning sharing ideas you know so over to you jackie before i come to donovan and wayne to give their perspective yes, I did, just just a quick uh, conversation um comment i really want to congratulate you um that's outstanding I, you know you have my energy all my brain just going working <laughs> overtime right now yeah, um, because right away i see a couple of opportunities where and platform even right here in reggae month this Wednesday, the production for Jamaica Day among schools is taking place. And um, I, I, I was able to convince, not too hard, I spoke with the, the coordinator just on uh, yesterday. And I said, there's no way your program can, cannot go air to all our schools across Jamaica without the input of the diaspora. Yes. And I reached out to a consul general. And I think this is an exciting piece that could be included. Yeah. Yeah. right away i'm, I'm, so, I'm sending you that film right now It'll yes, be on your WhatsApp. yes and, I, and i'm sure they'd love to talk to him and introduce the book and um, i mentioned earlier about a tour that we're looking at working with various cultural institutions of universities i think this is also a nice addition mm. that could be part of the forums and um, I also would love to, I think we have not finalized all the forums. Um, one or two forums are still in progress. So maybe there is some uh, space that we can talk about how we can Thank you. Yeah. Thank so you. I, I just want to say well, that. I listen, I listen to, um, I've listened, I'm say, I, I have a good listen to you, um, Jackie. And I digest a lot of things, what you're saying. Um, but this, I know, 
you will want to be a part of this. And I would love you to be a part of this because it's Jamaica and you are Jamaica. I can see that. I, you don't have to tell me anything. You are Jamaica. Um, there, there's something I want to mention to you because of the nanny element. I was yeah. in Florida last two weeks ago, but I didn't know. But every headline was talking about Maroon Town. I, I don't yeah. know if you know that. Oh, it's, yeah. It's still oh. topical. So, you know, when we have things are topical, exactly. you can right. grab onto it. So yes. I, I am pretty sure um, we, we could get you a couple of uh, uh, conversation pieces going with a whole nanny element. It's yeah. very topical yeah. right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's great. And and in fact, we're we're running a campaign called um, uh, well, well, Welcome to St. Mary. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll be introducing the Scots Hall Maroons over the next few weeks. <laughs> oh, we can. <laughs> and, and, and the other great thing in terms of what um, uh, uh, Winston it's has done as well. Not. Yeah. Again, because at the end of this month, we actually launch because we align ourselves with Black History Month anyway. So for the next two years, we're aligning Black History Month. So we talk about Black History season. So for us, Black History season goes from February right through to October, with all the different <laughs> things happening. I love that. that. Smart idea. Really Hardcore uh, month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best one. Now, the other important thing this year is Ghana 65. So we also have a program called Homeward Bound Ghana. Again, aligning, because obviously Nanny was from Ghana or that part of Africa. So you know, she's accepted as being coming from Ghana through to Jamaica. So that alignment there, that gives us another huge market in terms of Jamaica and Jamaican culture as it relates to Ghana, which of course they, they do admire the culture. So we, so from a communications perspective, we've got so many good good opportunities if we use those channels. That's why I think what you've announced today, uh, Jackie, is really important for us to amplify and help it, it, people understand those opportunities to be able to access, you know, access their activities, the pathways. So, and that's why Wayne Hall and uh, Donovan and myself, we're collaborating through our, you know, for our various platforms. So, uh, Wayne, let me come to you then, Donovan, then Dean. Before we do that, um, Rudy, yeah. Alexandra has to leave. So, right, okay. Um, if we can all give right. him like a few minutes before. Yeah, all right. Go. He wants to say his goodbyes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you there? Right. Alexandra. Alexandra's a top star, you know. <laughs> yeah, for those who came on late, I know Diana came on afterwards. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Jackie heard. Um, Ale and I think Wayne R was on. You got the but, magazine, um, Alexandra, as well. Yes. I don't know. Did Jackie see the magazine? No, that's what I was trying to collaborate with. Uh, Jackie, he is an historian for Jamaica, and he has a magazine called Product of Jamaica Magazine.com. This man writes about the history of Jamaica, the real history, not somebody's story, the real history of Jamaica through music, people, culture, any and everything. Um, you do tourism, and I know Diane do tourism. This man know places in Jamaica that nobody else has known. And um, <laughs> he put all this stuff in his magazine. I mean, I was shocked when I met him. Uh, we have a program um, segment on my program called Jamaican Voices. And what we do, we talk to people around Jamaica, you know, on the streets about every topic that affects Jamaica in the diaspora. And one thing I admire about him, at the end of the program, I said, who are we going to give kudos or big ups to? 99% of the time, it's either a child, students or a woman. And they are doing, this is the year for women. 2021, women have risen and done some great things in the whole diaspora and Jamaica and throughout the world. So, uh, Mr. Alexander, before you go, I know you're probably hungry and stuff. So just tell them who you are and collaborate with uh, Jackie and Diane and everybody here. Yeah, we're going to come to you, Diane. As soon as uh, Alexander has spoken, we'll come to you so you can have your first word. Yeah, I'm not going to take up much time because I realize there's a lot of people here. I've been listening to the program. And as Jackie said, the, uh, the theme this year is come catch the rhythm virtually. And I remember my brother Clancy doing the song, Catch the Rhythm, Feel the Rhythm. If redeem. Ever, if, right, redeem. Because <laughs> Clancy used to correct me all the time. So Clancy Eccles is, was my, well, he is my brother, but he passed away. So he had that song, Feel the Rhythm, mm -hmm. Redeem. Like you say, uh, 
you have to see with me. I grew up in the U.S., so sometimes it's very hard to troubling you. Yes, pronounce the words. You know, I, I get that all the while. You sound like I, an Englishman, Alan. Does, does he? <laughs> oh, it's talk like an Englishman. Okay, I'll try right now and see. No, what no, I'm no. Doing. It's all right. Carry on as you were before, please. You know, and as as I look at it, and I'm thinking of reggae music. I don't know how many of you saw in the Jamaica Observer. They put up a, a, a monument in honor of Dr. Rodney. Walter Rodney, I don't know how many of you remember Dr. Ro uh, Walter mm -hmm. Rodney that was yeah. assassinated and everything. Yeah. And then again, as I saw that, I remember my brother, same Clancy Eccles, one of them that was there from day one with reggae music, did the song Rodney's History. Mm -hmm. You know, and all of this just ties in. And at Product of Jamaica Magazine, we believe in keeping the history accurate because a lot of the things that you're reading now are not really history. People go on the internet, they Google. Yeah. And if you, if, if you don't believe me, go on the internet, Google certain things, and there'll be 20 websites, yeah. Yeah. exact word for word, because yeah. everyone copies and pastes. Mm -hmm. Like Donovan says, yeah. I do my best. I go straight back to the 1800s, find mm -hmm. the people like Condell Bridge and all of those people and, and find the rhythm, uh, find, you know what I'm saying, rhythm now and mm -hmm. find the true history because I believe in brand Jamaica. Yeah. I, this is a real flag behind me. It's not just a, a, a one-off a one -off thing. This is the real flag. As you notice the name of my magazine, Product of Jamaica Magazine, because what I bring to the world and I, what I want the world to understand, Jamaica is more than, how would you say? I always say white sand beaches and waterfalls. We have a beautiful culture. We have beautiful people. We have like the world's greatest music. Like Donovan says, I always big up the women. To me, Jamaican women, you want a Latino? Jamaican women look like Latino. You want a Chinese? They look like Chinese. Jamaican women is the beautiful, and it's not just even that. Jamaican women can do so much with so little. So I always big them up because they're a powerhouse of Jamaica. and. You, uh, Nadine, I'd mentioned about likes and so forth. You know, I am on Instagram, maybe have a thousand odd followers, mm. but I won't pay a bot to increase my followers to millions because at the end of the day, when I go on my website and see how many people visit, then I see the hundreds of thousands that are visiting the website. And that means more to me. So it's the same thing with the music. And there's a lot I can share about reggae music, but I'm not going to share all of it now because we are actually working on a special project of reggae music that's actually going to be from, how would you say, the eyes of the youth, the youth that were there. Because I was there. I was there on King Street. I went to Raytown. I might, you know, the plastic surgery helped me and the filter and everything. <laughs> I pulled. I became a great grandfather the other day, but you know, I was there. So we're going to do a program through there. And as my brother just mentioned a little while ago, but the Maroons, I found out recently my mother was 100% Maroon. And I'm working on something like that. If uh, you had listened to Donovan's program, we had Maurice from the Moortown Maroons on two weeks ago. So I believe in Jamaican culture. I believe in the Jamaican people, brand Jamaica. And I believe in how would you say making the most of it and not destroying it right so anybody needs any information you can go on product of jamaica magazine.com and you can read about things and we're uh currently working on an app so very soon you'll be able to just download the program as you can see it's actually a printed magazine because of covid we have had to start doing digital which is new to me so we're working on the app so we have great things coming anybody has an interesting story you can let me know because we like to cover the real jamaica i don't know if you know what i mean but the real yeah. jamaica yeah, the yeah. real people the real food and all of that all the other big places have to pay but the real jamaicans don't have to pay so that's pretty much it uh just listen to reggae voyage on Saturdays, I'll be there, and you can know more about what I do. Thank you for that.
and we, we are broadcasting live on Fresh FM Radio London now as well. So, Diana, did you want to make a quick point? Unmute. Unmute. Unmute, Diana. Okay, just want to uh, thank um, the the comments before that since the, before Diana come in to Ale Alexandro. Alessandro. Yeah, yes, I see a lot of synergies with Jamaica 60th program. I'm very passionate about what you're doing in terms of um, capturing the, the, the diaspora community. Mm -hmm. I know there's funding out there for your program from several of partners that have been reaching out, actually yearning to do something for Jamaica 60th and wanting to um, get on board. The Jamaica Tourist Board is taking a much keener interest in putting some advertising dollars into the diaspora market. I think it drove home during COVID that when the world shut down, we still have Jamaicans that's going to come to our shores. Uh -huh. So they, there is funding available for your program. And um, I would love for us to formally write to the, the Ministry of Culture, the Honorable Olivia Babsy Grange, and send her your program through copy me through marketing and the project director, Mr. Lenford Salmon for head of the secretariat. And we will look at how we could designate your uh, publication as a Jamaica, special Jamaica 60th publication. So I just wanna say that because we wanna partner with people like um, what you're doing. Well, that's absolutely great because it's funny that you say that I have been doing some special photography for Jamaica 60, to represent Jamaica 60. And I was actually saying, I'm going to try to send it to the ministries and, and so forth to see if they can use it. Because besides doing the, working on my magazine, which I do everything myself, I pay for all the printing, everything is done. I do all the writing, the photography, everything. Is that, you know, I need to get it out there because I wanted people to love Jamaica the way I love Jamaica. I used to live in the US and I made the decision to come back here because I fell back in love with my country. And regardless of are what you, happened- Are you based in the US or Jamaica? I'm based right here in, in Jamaica. Jamaica. That's why the flag, I'm a real Jamaican. So <laughs> I'm here, I, I have children overseas, I have grandkids, everything. I will visit, but this is the land of my birth and I'm not gonna sell out regardless of what happens. This is what I believe in, the real Jamaica. Jackie, I'm going to put his info in the, in, the, in the chat. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and Diana is there because she's in the community. So it's a great collaboration that um, can be made. So over to you, Miss Diana. Hello. Okay, she's just dropped off the line as you said that. Oh. Uh -oh. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure she will be back anyway. Uh, Alexandra, great to meet you. As I said, we're definitely going to work with you from a fresh FM. Uh, perspective, Radio London, and of course, our reggae global and culture program as well. So, and Homeward Bound. So, we've got lots that we can collaborate with you. So, I've got to thank Donovan for bringing you onto the platform, which, which is great. Thanks for that. Hi, Rudy. Why Diana gets ready? I know sometimes Miss Jackie might have to go, might get his son a call, and I feel so excited <laughs> to on the platform and Mr. Alexander. I can tell you, I have history that nobody in Jamaica mm -hmm. has. I have history about Bedford. I mean, real history that nobody in the world have, you know. And I, I, I have a program that's called Let on the Corner. And this program is children in August town, people who have lost their father, you know, through violence and things. So I have a program with children, both all across Jamaica. Now we have children of Jamaican born in America. And I would like the tourist board to, you know, to see what they can do to package this program. So we have children from, you know, that they comes on every Tuesday. And let us talk, let us rap. But what I'm trying to do is to motivate them to education. You know, like I said, coming from August, when you say August, people think I'm just, you know, I, I came here in the United States. I got my associate degree. I also got my bachelor. You know, because I want to mention certain community. We have children, I know who passed through my aunt, they are a pilot. So I want to be a pilot and we're going to... I don't want Mr. Westrock to disappear because this point oh, yeah. is very important. He mentioned okay. a, a community program that could connect the dot there, so... That's what I want to... Yeah, I'm Mr. Wedler. Okay. 
Yeah, man. Yeah, Absolutely. So we, we got the... Work with anyone that, you know, has anything to show the positive. And like you just said, you have people in the U.S. from Jamaica. That's a part of the magazine. We feature the positive because most of the time you hear on the media, it's something negative that a Jamaica mm -hmm. did overseas. Well, we feature the positive yeah. influences that Jamaicans are having overseas. So th th this is something that we can work on together. Absolutely. Great. First Great. of all, West Rock, do you want to mention to them the, the community outreach since uh, the other person isn't here uh, initiative and see where some synergies could be formed there, the one that you, you started in December? Can you hear? Yeah, you're on mute. Uh, now? <laughs> yeah, we can hear now. Okay, are you hearing me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I was saying that I, I could go beyond um, December and look at um, the Youth Development Foundation of downtown Kingston, which was established um, over 10 years ago. And uh, that was actually when I was um, a superintendent. Are you following me? Right, we can Back hear you now. You, you, you muted for a second. Okay, so I was saying to you that um, I was a superintendent of police um, in the Jamaica Constabulary Force here in Jamaica. And um, I, most of my earlier work started in downtown Kingston and uh, when I look around, there were so many inner city around the, 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 the corporate area. And many of these youths were misguided. You know, they were just loose in the community. And I felt uh, it was my obligation as a police officer then to incorporate them as part of a, a foundation where they could get a skill for life. And I engaged the, um, the business community and we set up this foundation and we were able to, um, you know, uh, develop more than 50 youths in that area. But then, you know, as time goes by, you as a police officer, you have to move on to different divisions. So um, I'm still in touch with the program. In fact, I want to um, reestablish it now as part of a West Rock. Um, foundation where I can get better and bigger support for not just the, the community of downtown, but other neighboring communities, you know? Mm -hmm. So what we have done in December um, was really for me to look back to where I'm coming from, you know, the community of Swamp Plain, Bog Walk. That's where I was born. And I felt that if you can't look at where you are from, you know, and, 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 and think about how to make a change there. It makes no sense for you to go nowhere else and make that change. You have to make it from where you're from, you know? So I started to work with the basic school and the community at large to inspire them, you know, to, to look at where, because they, they, they all know my journey. So when I go back there, I'm just like an hero. So it's all in my songs, you know, from the, Day, I used to walk around with my guitar singing and so on. And when they look at me and where I'm at today, they're very enthused. And this is what they say all the time. So I felt it was necessary for me to, um, you know, assist them as much as I can. So I'm working with the basic school and I'm also working on a youth development program. And, uh, you know, the sky's the limit. As I get bigger and my platform in music, you know, I definitely will be able to do a lot more, you know, for the community. And I wish I can do it for the entire Jamaica. You know, that's my aim and my desire. Yeah. And of course, with music, I can make that change across the world. So, you know, um, the hopes are very high, you know, and I'm big at youth development. Very, very big at that. Th thank you very much. I don't know, do you know Bishop Neville Owens on Maxwell Avenue? It's got a big, he took over the cinema. It's at the top of yes. Maxfield Avenue. Maxfield Avenue, yes, I know Maxfield very well. 
Yeah, so but he, he took over the cinema and he's made that into quite a, a good centre for young people and performances yes. and everything. Yeah, so he, he's sure. one of our partners as well. And with uh, Dr Lola Ramakan, she is the wife of the current High Commissioner here in London. So she has a, a book called Community Helpers, which has okay. got all the role models and it's a, a real good, uh, consistent curriculum book as well. So from that, um, the dean has arranged that there'll actually be a mural of those role models for the young people in yes. in, in in August town. So I, I can see how we can connect all these activities together very sure. easily and amplify so that we get that wider diaspora support. So thank, thank you very much. Thank you for that information. For that. Thank you. Great. Good to meet you as well. Right, so Diana's dropped off. Um, Jackie, let's see, Wayne, we haven't heard from Wayne for a while. Okay. Wayne, can you give us your perspective? Sure. So I want to say shout out, Bogwalk. I'm from up the road, West Rock, <laughs> in Norton. <laughs> You're serious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, well, you know, so there's a lot we have to do, brother. I know. Yes, yeah. so I'm from right up the road in Yorkton, my friend. Mm. Yeah, so that was interesting to hear. And I, I you know, already tip my hat to you for what you're trying to do and how you're going about it. Great. Uh, I wanted to weigh in a little bit on General Saint, man. See, I had a guest on my show a couple of weeks ago to kick off Black History Month, uh, Professor Harcourt Fuller. And he resides here in Atlanta. He's a Maroon and a strong proponent of um, maintaining, you know, um, the, the maroon life everywhere and helping, you know, my audience and I to understand better the current situation there in, uh, in Jamaica re regarding the maroons and so on. And it was an awesome conversation, an entire hour of it, um, about to release the video on YouTube as well. And so I'm listening that and I'm hearing you, General Saint, talk about your passion and, and, and reason for writing that book. And, you know, we had a great conversation about it. I haven't read it yet. I look forward to reading it. But just say hats off, man. And if our history is, 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 is so vital to be preserved from any angle we can. And everyone has a very interesting twist on our history. Uh, it, it, you, we, we cannot in one book encompass our entire history. And so it's always great to hear another perspective about it. And for Alessandro, make sure I pronounce the name right. Alessandro, oh. listen, you're, you, you're, you're passionate about something that is very easy to let go of. And that is um, remembering how much of a treasure our island is. And it's so easy to get caught up in so many other things. It's one of those, like you say, you see the value of people going to your, um, your website, et cetera. But I, you know, maintaining that conviction and passion to sell our country mm -hmm. from the very little community and what it values. I remember Hill and Gully Ride used to take us to some places, <laughs> if you remember that mm -hmm. show. And I used mm -hmm. to say, oh my gosh, what a blessing, because we would be miles away from some very vitally important part of our history. I wouldn't even know it, these districts, etc. So hats off to you. And, and I hope you get the support because it's a thankless thing more, more times than not to show that passion and commitment to selling and, and keeping Jamaica mm -hmm. the most basic primal you know, information in the forefront. So hats off to you, my brother. Thank you. Thanks for that. So I, I, I feel good to be on this platform today. Yeah, great. Alessandro, you've got your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, all right, West Rock, know exactly where Swamp Lane is, down the road from Magazine Lane. Uh, we've covered Riversdale and all those places. Uh, Wayne, there's a question. Uh, you don't realize my last name. I just I just put two and two together. You're from Uriton, right? Yes. And I'm wondering if you know a Charlotte Kelly. That I Charlotte Kelly? With. Charlotte oh my goodness. <laughs> Guess who that is, Wayne? That is, I'm your cousin in law. <laughs> <laughs> Get out. Yes. yes. I'm your 
Shirley, She's kill a Ferrari. Oh, show. my word. All the time she talks about your show, all the time. The Wayne Hall show. So now I finally, through Zoom, we meet each other. Oh, that's Look my cousin-in-law, guys. So <laughs> have you ever seen this, Rudy? That's great, isn't it? God have mercy. Live on Fresh FM Radio London. Live on, oh, by the way, man, I just want to <laughs> say how much I Wait appreciate so everyone great. listening to Fresh FM Radio. Thank you, guys, for listening to my show every Thursday night at 10.30 p.m. And if you haven't gotten a chance to check it out, please do so. And it's a pleasure to have you, have me, all right, in your community. Yes. And I just want to quickly say to Wayne, you know, you talk about Elan Gully Ride. I'm on the Elan Gully Ride program. If you Google my name, D. Roden, Augustown, I'm the person that do everything about Bedward. You know, I, I did a program with Ellie Skelly. I'm the person that used to do all those shows on Elan wow. Ride. So, and, and, and that's why we met, because of Bedward. Because of Philip Bedward. Those of you who know Philip Bedward. Yeah. It's from the Bedward line. Wow. And that's how well, Dean, awesome. Great we to all know, got Dean. together, three of us. Oh, my Absolutely. goodness. Spiritual. Wow. Isn't it? Oh, my so God. That, that's great. And, of course, I must mention the Reggae Voyage show by Donovan Longmore, Tuesdays on Fresh FM Radio London, 10, 10 30 p.m. So, you know, we, we're pleased to have these other programs on our platform. I think it's really important. And we have great collaboration and integration across the diaspora movement. So again, we're, we're, we're leading the way because we we recently also, just after Christmas, we had a, 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 Nancy, a Nancy House, a Nancy story from a Nancy House. And, and again, that went down very well. And that's something that we're gonna keep up quite regularly. So um, we're gonna produce much, broadcast much more drama as well as part of Jamaica Six. I'm going to ask the question, you mentioned a Nancy stories. Do we have any um, interpreted in, in, in more of an English version of a Nancy story so we can spread it to, I've been interpreting it as I read it, as I read them. Right. But do, does anyone out. know of any literature that literally has the Nancy story kind of rewritten for okay. like someone who's grown up in say the US, Canada, UK, as okay. no Patwa background? I'm sure we have, and that's a great question to ask, so I shall follow up on that way. Okay. And I'd no doubt somebody happy would to say, to yes, know. I've been next door all the time, but nobody <laughs> recognizes me. <laughs> <laughs> and then they bring out all the work that they've been doing for years, so I'm sure that they're there. So that, that's great. Great cultural knowledge. This is really happy with this. Okay, I think we're coming down to to what is the end of a great program. Super Bowl. And, <laughs> and I think I would like to leave the last word with Jackie Knight from the Ministry of Culture, because I think what she um, presented to us early really exemplifies the cultural excellence. And it reminds me, Jackie, a few years ago when I read the Jamaica's um, cultural policy a few years ago and what it said was Jamaica towards a cultural super state so I've always had that in mind Jamaica towards a cultural super state last word with you okay well thank you very much to everyone on the platform um, I'm indeed honored to be among great men as I listen and women today um, I feel really, really special. And thank you for the hard work. Uh, Donovan, Dean, Wayne, Hall Show, uh, Alessandro, Winston. I uh, hope I didn't forget anyone. Um, to all our special invited guests, West Rock. Um, indeed, Jamaica 60th. And I just want to highlight the theme for Jamaica 60th is reigniting a nation. The theme for Reggae Month is come catch the rhythm. So all year, the reigniting a nation is what will be transcended throughout the year. And this program today has reignited my soul, my spirit. And we want to reignite from Jamaica right across the diaspora. We want everyone to tune in. We, we want something. 
COVID is not limited to Jamaica. COVID is across the world. So we have an opportunity as a country, as a people, to feel proud and to showcase and to talk about our history. I've been seeing lots of things going around on the social media platform, JBC TV. Remember them days? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Jamaica. Yes. Remember them days? Yeah. Uh, Jamal. You know, so anything that can ignite our spirit and spread the message to our children. A lot of them don't know this history. Mm. Nanny. A lot of them don't. They, they ask the question because I hear I have two kids, you know, they're not really kids anymore. They're 19 and 23. And they ask the question, really and truly, mommy, what is the significance of, of, of a nanny? You know, even though they do history in school, but they know about Usain Bolt and they hear about Bob Marley, but the history of, you know, our nation and our heroes, it transcends far, the Windrush history. Those things are important. I have so many relatives in England, you know, and so many of us do have this history. This is the year. We want something to talk about. Let's talk about it. Let's have our friends in media like yourself. Let's capture it, Alessandro, in, in books. That's going to create the legacy. I had the distinct pleasure of working at the University of Technology in the Office of the President to spearhead the Olympic Legacy Program in 2012 and Usain Bolt's first PR person. And I will tell you that one of the opportunities that came out of it is I understood what legacy means because people are like, oh, what are we going to get out of Usain? I think. That legacy is why I met people like Usain, sorry, um, Rudy Page and people from that time because we developed a program where it's not just about the man on the track. It's about brand Jamaica and understanding what do you take from connecting the dots. So I will say as I leave this platform, there are several corporate entities that has been reaching out to me trying to understand what can they latch on to for the rest of the year and this is because we have gotten off the mark late a lot of people have been on the back burner kind of stand still with their marketing funds with their pr dollars not sure how to convert it the world has been shut down they are rearing and ready to go so anything that they can align themselves to, to give them publicity. I'm saying to everyone, take advantage of it. We have several corporate partners, several diaspora partners as well. And we want to see an integration and collaboration. And the, the average man Jamaican, let's be proud. One of our objective is that we wanna wear the colors, carry the flag, play the music, talk the language, and that's what Jamaica is all about. Be proud of who we are and what we have to showcase as a country. Thank you. Let's reignite Jamaica. One love. And gentlemen, thank you for having me today. Thank and you. Thank, thank you. you. It's been a thank pleasure. You, thank you. Good night from Reggae Global and Culture, Homeward Bound, Fresh FM Radio London. And I must mention our other collaborative partners, Diamond Travel, Jamaica Tourist Board, and McLean. Thank you and good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.